Alright, so this is our Honors Chemistry lesson video for section 8.2 and this is part 3 of 4. Yes, I know you probably can't imagine that there is still another part, but there's a lot of cool stuff to learn about the stat structure. So we've already learned how to do um, single bonded molecules, we've learned how to do multiple bonds like double and triple bonds, and we've learned how to do polyatomic ions where there is a charge overall. So now we're going to focus on something called resonance. So a resonance structure is a structure that occurs when it's possible to draw two or more valid Lewis dot structures for a subject, I mean for a substance. So for example, you'll see that with O3, which is ozone in just a minute. So when resonance occurs, you should separate the possible structures with a double-sided arrow. The actual structure is a hybrid of the resonance structures. All right, so sometimes you can draw more than one accurate Lewis dot structure. And so when that's possible, you just need to draw all the possible options. So let's look at some together. So it says write the Lewis dot structure for the following. So we're going to do O3. So remember, we follow our five steps. So step one is add our valence. Oxygen's in group 16, so it has six valence electrons, but there are three. So I'm going to multiply that by three. So I have 18 valence electrons to work with. Step two is I start by single bonding everything. So I'm just going to bond them like this. Now again, eventually we'll get to shapes and things like that, and we'll see that this is not actually a linear molecule. But right now, you just need to worry about getting the bonds and the lone pairs right. All right, so we single bonded everybody. So step three is follow the octet and duet rule. Well, I don't have hydrogen, so I'm going to follow the octet rule. So for this oxygen, right now it has two electrons from the bond, so it needs six more. This oxygen has two four from the bond, so it needs four more, and this oxygen has two from the bond, so it needs six more. So I have everybody stable, so step four is check my total. So I'm allowed to have 18, I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So I actually have 20, whoops, I wrote two, I actually have 20 valence electrons, so I have two extra electrons, and so remember, step five says for every two extra electrons, I need an extra bond. So the question becomes, well, which one do I put the bond on? Do I put the double bond here, or do I put it here? Like, how do I know? Well, the thing is, it could go in either spot, so you have to draw both options. Okay, so for my first Lewis dot structure, I'm going to add the double bonds right here. So then don't forget, you have to readjust to make everybody have an octet. So this oxygen now has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, so I get rid of 2. This oxygen has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, so I get rid of 2. So everybody's still stable, but now I'm allowed 18, and I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. But what I do is because I could have put the double bond on the other side, I separate it with double arrows, and I have to draw that option also. So in that case, what we started with was this right here. And remember we realized, wait a minute, I have 20 electrons, so I need one extra bond. So I would have just put it on this side. So see, this oxygen has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, so I get rid of 2. This one has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, so I get rid of 2. And so what happens in reality is that it's like a hybrid of these two. So instead of having one side that is actually a single bond with a bond order of one, and one side which is actually a double bond with a bond order of two, it's like the double bond is kind of half on each side. So it's almost like you have a bond and a half, or a bond order of 1.5. And so sometimes you'll see it kind of drawn like this, like they'll have like kind of a dotted line, like you'll see something like this. And that's kind of showing that that bond is kind of in both locations. Like I said, it's a weird hybrid thing um, that's happening. And so what we would technically count the bond order as, and this one is like I said, about one and a half. All right, so that's how you do uh, resonance, is you just draw all the possible examples. So let's look at this next one. So it says, which is predicted to have the shorter sulfur oxygen bonds, SO3 or SO3 with a negative 2 charge? Well, remember, the shorter the bond, 
the more bonds there are. So like if you have SO single bond, SO double bond, or SO triple bond, this one's going to be the shortest because there's more bonds to pull them together. The single bond would be the longest because there's less bonds to pull it together. So the higher your bond order, that's what that's called. Like this is bond order one, two, three. Um, and like I said, once you have resonance, you have to split it up. So this would be like a 1.5. Um, the higher the bond order, the shorter the bond. So what we need to do is look at what happens in the Lewis dot structures. All right, so we have two of them. So first I'm going to do SO3. So step one is add my valence. So S is in group 16, so it has six. O is also in group 16, so it also has six times three. And so that's 24 valence electrons to work with. So for SO3, I have 24 valence electrons. So second step is single bond, everybody. So remember, if you have a single atom and multiples of another one, the single one goes in the middle. So S will go in the middle, and I'll just put my O's like this. And like I said, if you like to draw it in a Y formation, that's fine. We'll learn about shapes in section 8.3, if I can ever get there. All right, so step three is follow the octet and do it rule. So we don't have any hydrogens, so they're all going to follow the octet. So this oxygen, it has two from the bond, so it needs six more. This one has two from the bond, so it needs six more. And this one has two from the bond, so it also needs six more. But don't forget to check that center atom. A lot of people have trouble remembering that part. All right, so S has two, four, six, so it needs two more to get eight. So see, everybody's nice and stable. Now we gotta go to step four, which is check our total. So I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. So I have 26 valence electrons, which is two extra. So remember, for every two extra electrons, I need one more bond. But here's the problem. I could put that one bond in three different locations. So this one is actually going to have three resonance structures. All right, so I'm just going to choose to put it on this one first. Doesn't matter what order you go in. I'm gonna to choose to put that on that one first. And so then what I need to do is readjust for my octet. So this oxygen has two, four, six, eight, 10. So I need to remove two. The sulfur has two, four, six, eight, 10. So I need to remove two. All right, but since I have the option to put it on the other two bonds, I have to draw those two. And so one easy way to do it is instead of sitting there and readjusting every time, if you look, my sulfur is not going to have any lone pairs. The oxygen with the double bond is only going to have two lone pairs, whereas the oxygen with the single bond will have three. Once you realize that, it's not that hard to draw all three. So I'll put my double-sided arrow. And so now this time, I'm going to put my double bond going down. So this oxygen has a single bond, so I'm going to put its six electrons. This one has the double bond, so it will get the four. And this one has a single bond, so it gets the six. And then I'll do another double-sided arrow, and now I have to put my bond here. So I have my single, my single, and my double now. So remember, the oxygens with the single bonds get six electrons each, and the oxygen with the double bond gets four. So what's happening? Well, remember, it's a hybrid of all three of them. So this double bond is going to kind of split itself three ways between all three bonds. So it's kind of like they have one and a third bonds. So our bond order here is actually 1.3, technically. Okay, so we need to know that because we gotta look at who has the shorter one. All right, so for SO3 to negative, I'm actually gonna draw that up here just because I'm out of room down here. Clearly, I mean, I'm writing into the dark right here. All right, so let's put SO3 negative two up here. All right, so first step is I add my valence. S is in group 16, so it has six. O is in group 16, so it has six, but I multiply it by three, and this one has a charge. So remember, the charge, we have to change the valence electron. A two negative charge means it gained two electrons. So I add two more. Okay, so in this case, I have 26 valence electrons. 
So I need the single bond, everybody. So remember, the single atom, which is S, is going to go in the middle. So I get everybody all set up. Step three, I follow octet do it. I have no hydrogen, so I'm going to follow octet. So oxygen has two from the bond, so I'm going to give it six more. This oxygen has two, so I'm going to give it six more. This oxygen has two, so I'm going to give it six more. And then don't forget that center atom. Everybody leaves it out for some reason. All right, so S has two, four, six, so it needs two. All right, so then I go back and check my total for step four. I'm allowed to have 26, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. So there's my structure for that one. So see, you can see that in this structure, this is just an actual single bond. So it has a bond order of one. It has a single bond. This down here, remember, it has that double bond that's going to split itself three ways. So it's like it's saying it has a bond order of 1.3 or 1.33, like one and a third. Let's just write that. One and a third. So remember, the higher the amount of bonds, the shorter the bond length. All right, so it says which one has the shorter one, so it would be the SO3, because see, it has a one and a third bond order, whereas the SO3 negative two only has a single bond, so it has a bond order of one. So our SO3 would have the shorter bond length. All right, and so some of y'all, you get stressed out about drawing all those loose dot structures, but it's not really that difficult. You know, with resonance, you're just drawing practically the same one just over and over, so it's not that bad. It's not like you're having to draw three totally different ones. All right, so y'all pause and try the next two, and then we'll look at them together. So I'll assume you've done that. So I'll assume you've done NO3, negative 1. So let's look at that. So first step is add our valence. So N has 5, and then O is in group 16, so it has 6. But I'm going to multiply that by 3. So next, I need to look at my charge. Negative 1 means it has gained 1 electron. So I add 1 more. Okay, so we add, in other words, 18 plus 6, which is 24 valence electrons. All right, so hopefully you got that part right. So next, I single bond everybody. So since N is by itself, N is going to go in the middle. And then I'm going to bond my O's to my N, just like that. All right, so then we move on, and step three is octet and duet rule. So I don't have any hydrogens, so they're all going to follow octets. So see, for oxygen, it has two, so I just add six more. And y'all, the more you practice this, the faster you'll get at it. Okay, so oxygen has two, so I add six more. Like, if you watch, it's just a pattern of what I'm doing. Oxygen has two, so I add six more. And don't forget that center atom has two, four, six, so it needs two more. All right, so step four is I need to check my total. Well, I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26 valence electrons. So I have two extra electrons. I need to do step five. So that means I need one extra bond. But just like in the SO3 a minute ago, I have three options of where I can put it. So I have to put it in each possible option. Okay, so I'm just going to start here with this one. So then I need to readjust. So oxygen now has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, so I get rid of 2. And nitrogen has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, so I get rid of 2. So now I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. So I'm going to bracket it and put my charge, because remember that's what we do when it has a charge. Oh gosh, I think I forgot to do that on the previous slide because I started talking about bond order. Um, if I forgot to do that on the SO3 with the negative 2 charge on the previous slide, I apologize. Um, but I got off on a tangent about bond order so that we could decide which one had the shorter bond length. Um, so that one should have had it if I didn't put it on there. All right, so then I have to do a double-sided arrow, of course, because I need to put it in the other two possible locations. So this time I'm going to put it going down like that. And so remember, the oxygen with the single bond has six electrons. And then the oxygen with the double bond has four electrons. Okay, and then I'll bracket this one and put the charge. 
gosh, I really hate if I forgot to on the previous slide. I really need to go back, but I don't want to redo this video. All right, so I'm just going to keep moving on and it's going to be okay. All right, so then last I have to show that it could go here. So I'll put my single bond, single bond, and double bond. So remember the oxygens with the single have six lone electrons, and the oxygen with the double has four. And so then I put it in brackets and put the charge. Okay, so for this one, technically, because you're splitting that second bond between all three, they kind of have a, have a bond order of one and a third, just like in the previous question. All right, so hopefully you got that one right. If not, you have another one you can try. All right, so for this one, um, before you try it, hang on, also let me see where my video is supposed to end on this one. Okay, sorry, I know where to end now. Alright, so before you start this one, your two O's and your H are going to be bonded to your C. So pause this one, try it, I'll assume you've done that. Alright, so first step is add up our valence electrons. So for hydrogen, it's in group 1, so it has 1. For carbon, it's in group 14, so it has 4. For oxygen, it's in group 16, so it has 6, but I'm going to multiply that by 2. It also has a negative 1 charge, which means it has gained 1 electron. So I'm going to add 1 more. So I have 12 plus 4, which is 16, plus 2, which is 18. So that's how many I have to work with. Alright, so I'm going to put my C in the middle, and then I'm going to bond my H and my two O's to my C just like that. All right, so I single bonded everybody. And like I said, if I give you a weird one like this, I'll let you know the setup of it. All right, so I single bonded everybody. So next is follow octet and duet. Well, hydrogen follows the duet rule, so it is already stable. Remember, hydrogen will never have lone pairs. It will never have more than one bond. All right, so next I follow the octet rule for O and C. So this O has two, so I add six more to give it eight. This O has two, so I add six more to give it eight. And then don't forget that center atom. C has two, four, six, so it needs two, so it will also have eight. So next, I need to total my valence electrons. So I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So I have 20 valence electrons. I'm only allowed to have 18. I have two extra electrons. So I'm going to have to go to step five. That means I need one bond. Now, this one you got to be careful on because can you put a double bond to hydrogen? No. Remember, hydrogen can only hold two valence electrons because it's in the first energy level. So I only have two options of where to put my bond. Okay, so I need two structures for this one. So I'm just going to put it going up first, and so then I need to readjust. So oxygen has two, four, six, eight, ten, so I can get rid of two. Carbon has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, so I need to get rid of 2. Alright, so I'm allowed to have 18, and so if you recount, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. And again, because this one has a charge, we need to put our charge. Let me talk about that before I do bond order. Alright, so on this one, the CH bond is an actual single bond, because that bond isn't going to change. But because this one is going to be shared right here, remember it's kind of like it's a one and a half bond because they're not a true single bond, but they're not a true double bond. Um, because remember, it's a hybrid of the two. So all I need to do is switch my double bond to my other oxygen. So remember, the oxygen with the single bond has six electrons, and the oxygen with the double bond has four. And so these are my two possible structures for that. Okay, and so again, um, when you're looking at your bond order, that bond that's kind of moving around, it's a hybrid of the two. So when you're talking about bond order, you need to split that bond between the two of them. All right, so hopefully you got them right. This one was a little trickier just because of the H. Hopefully you didn't try to put your multiple bonds to the H. Because remember, it cannot accommodate that. Right. So sometimes we can use something called formal charge to help determine which resonance structure is more favored because sometimes you can draw more than one and still there's one that's more favored than the others. 
So the formal charge of an atom in a molecule is the charge the atom would have if all the atoms in the molecule had the same electronegativity, which isn't the case. So formal charges are not real charges. It's like a bookkeeping method to figure out which structure is preferred. So the way you do formal charge is you take the original amount of valence electrons for that element and you subtract the electrons for in, that you gave it in the Lewis structure. Now the thing is though, you only give them one electron from each bond. So I know this picture is kind of small, so I'm just going to blow up this one part right here. So for oxygen, oxygen starts with six valence electrons from the periodic table. And here in our Lewis dot structure, we gave it one, two, three, four, five, six. We only, it's kind of like we break the bond. We only give it two, uh, well, sorry, one from each bond or two out of this double bond. Okay, because remember, they're each going to share the one electron. So don't count the bond as two when you're doing formal charge. Because yes, this bond is two, but one belongs to oxygen, one belongs to carbon. Okay, so let's look at that together. So when more than one Lewis dot structure can be drawn for a molecule, formal charges can be used to pick the most accepted structure. And sometimes they're all the same amount of acceptability. So number one, we generally choose the Lewis structure in which the atoms bear formal charges closest to zero. So you really want to see all zeros. If you see some negative ones and positive ones, that's okay. But really, if you get to like twos or threes, then that becomes an issue, and those usually aren't favored. Another thing is sometimes, of course, you can't get all zeros. Sometimes there's going to be some negatives or positives. So when that happens, we generally choose the Lewis structure in which any negative charges reside on the more electronegative elements. So the most electronegative element on the periodic table is fluorine, which is F. So the closer an element is to fluorine, the more electronegative it tends to be. And we'll talk more about electronegativity in section 8.4. But you do have an electronegativity chart in your packet, so you can refer to those numbers if you need to. So it says, the following are three possible Lewis structures for the thiocyanate ion, which is NCS negative. Determine the formal charges of the atoms in each structure, and then which one is preferred. All right, so let's look at each one. So N is going to start with five valence electrons because it is in group 15. So I can just go ahead and start all my Ns with five. Now I'm gonna subtract how many I have given it in my Lewis dot structure. So remember, I'm gonna only give it one from this bond. So it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So five minus seven gives me a negative two for nitrogen on this molecule. All right, so again, I'm gonna kind of split the bond. So I gave it one, two, three, four, five, six. So five minus six is negative one for nitrogen on that molecule, or polyatomic ion. All right, again, I'm gonna split the bond. So we started with five. Now it has one, two, three, four, five. So it, whoops, sorry. So five minus five is zero. Okay, so in my first Lewis dot structure, it has a negative two, and my second, it has negative one, and three, it has zero. And you just do that for each element. So carbon has four valence electrons to start with because it is in group 14. Okay, so again, I'm gonna split the bonds. So here, carbon has one, two, three, four. So four minus four is zero. Here, I'm gonna split the bond. Carbon has one, two, three, four. So four minus four is zero. And here, I'm gonna split the bond. Carbon has one, two, three, four. So four minus four is zero. So carbon's not really helping us out here. It has the most favored charge for all of them. So really, we're gonna to have to focus on the N and the S. All right, so let's, let's do S. S is in group 16, so it starts with six valence electrons. So then here, remember I'm splitting the bond. We gave it one, two, three, four, five. So six minus five is one. I'll put positive one just in case that helped. All right, so here we gave it one, two, three, four, five, six. So six minus six is zero. And then here we gave it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So six minus seven is negative one. 
Now what I want you to notice is if you add the formal charges, they will give you the charge of the actual molecule. That's one way to kind of check to see if you're doing it right. So see, negative 2 plus 0 plus 1 gives me negative 1, which is the charge of the actual polyatomic ion. Negative 1 plus 0 plus 0 is negative 1. And 0 plus 0 plus negative 1 is also negative 1. And so if you have a neutral molecule, they should add up to be 0. All right, so first of all, remember, we want the ones that have charges closest to zero. So see how these have two zeros and a negative one, and this one has a zero, a negative two, and a positive one? So we can go ahead and discount this one because we want everything to be zero if possible. All right, so then remember the second thing we look at is, okay, well, if um, we have to have a negative charge, then we want that one to be on the most electronegative element. So if you look, our most electronegative, in this case, remember we said it's whatever's closest to F is N. So in this case, since this one has the negative with the N, it would be our second structure. So the second one is the most preferred because that negative is on the most electronegative of the three. All right, so. I just showed you how to do one. Let's see. Yep, keep going. So now y'all try one. Sorry, for some reason I'm having trouble figuring out when I'm ending this video. I keep looking at the same thing and I'm still struggling. Alright, so on this one it says the cyanate ion, which is NCO negative, has three possible structures. Draw all three Lewis structures, label the formal charges, and indicate the preferred structure. All right, so for this one, they are going to stay in order, just like it's written. So it's going to be N bonded to C bonded to O. Don't forget, it has that negative one charge. All right, so I'm going to assume that you are pausing the video. You have drawn all three possibilities. Um, and just to give you a hint, this one it kind of looks similar to the previous one, um, bond-wise, if that helps out. Uh, so I'll assume you paused it and tried it, and let's look at it together. All right, so we have NCO negative. So the first step is add our valence. So N has 5, C has 4, O has 6, and a negative 1 means it's gained 1 electron, so plus 1 more. So I have 10 plus 6, so 16 valence electrons to work with. All right, so step 2 is single bond, everybody. So we have N. C, O. Step four is octet and duet rule. Well, I don't have any hydrogen, so I'll follow the octet rule. So N has two, so it needs six more. C has four, two, four, so it needs four more. And O has two, so it needs six more. All right, so next step is I am going to check my total. So I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So I have 20 valence electrons. I'm only allowed to have 16. So I have four extra electrons. So what that means is for every two extra, I need one bond. I need two bonds. So let's think about what our options are. Well, we could put both bonds over here. We could put both bonds over here or I could put one on each side. So those are my three possible options. So I'm just gonna start by putting both on this side. All right, so don't forget we gotta readjust for the octet rule. So I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 around nitrogen, so I need to remove four. I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 around carbon, so I need to remove four. So remember, I'm allowed to have 16, and I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. And so don't forget to bracket, okay? So that's one possible option. So hopefully you got that right. All right, so now let me put my other possible options. So one option was, of course, when it started like this. Would be to put one on each bond. Like I can have a double bond on each like this. So I need to go back and readjust. So my N now has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, so I need to get rid of 2. Carbon has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, so I get rid of 4. And oxygen has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, so I need to get rid of 2. 
So remember, I'm allowed 16, and I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So I bracket it and put my charge. And then don't forget that there was one more option. Okay, so remember, we started with this right here. And so our third option was we could have put both of them to the oxygen. So in that case, when I readjust, carbon has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So I remove both pairs. Oxygen has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. So I remove two pairs or four electrons. So then remember, I'm allowed to have 16, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. So I bracket it and put my charge. All right, so unfortunately, that wasn't the only thing the question was asking me. It also said to label the formal charges and pick the preferred structure. All right, so let's do our four more charges next. So for nitrogen, it's in group 15, so all of my nitrogens are going to start with five valence electrons. Now remember, I'm going to split the bond between them. So in this structure, sorry, my negative is kind of weird, or my subtraction sign is weird. I have one, two, three, four, five. So five minus five is zero. Here I have, let me split my bond, one, two, three, four, five, six. So 5 minus 6 is negative 1. Here, I'm going to split that bond. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 5 minus 7 is negative 2. So that's how I'm starting. Next, we're going to focus on carbon in the middle. So carbon is in group 14, so it starts with 4 valence electrons. So I'm going to split this bond. So this carbon has 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 minus 4 is 0. This carbon, let me split that bond, has 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 minus 4 is 0. This carbon, let me split that bond, is 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 minus 4 is 0. And so the last one to look at is oxygen. So oxygen starts with 6 valence electrons because it's in group 16. And so then in this structure, it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Because remember, I split that bond, so 6 minus 7 is negative 1. This one, it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 6 minus 6 is 0. And then in this one, it has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 6 minus 5 is a positive 1. So again, first make sure all your formal charges add up to be the actual charge or add up to be 0 if your molecule is neutral. So I have a negative 1 charge and a negative 1 formal charge. Negative 1 charge, negative 1 formal charge. Negative 1 charge, negative 2 plus 1 is, of course, negative 1. All right, so now we got to pick who is preferred. Okay, well, I remember that, of course, I want zeros when possible, so I can go ahead and discount this one because it has the negative 2 and the positive 1 and only one zero. And then the other thing you want to look at is if there is a negative charge, you want it on the most electronegative element. So if the elements become more electronegative as they are closer to fluorine. Okay, so I would either have it on the N or the O. Well, if you look at the periodic table, O is closer to fluorine, so this would be my preferred structure. So for me, it's the first one. You might not want to write first on your paper because I don't know what order you put them in, but it's the one where you have a single bond to oxygen and a triple bond to nitrogen. All right, so hopefully you're finding formal charges pretty easy. And remember, they're not real charges. It's just a bookkeeping method to help us figure out what is a preferred Lewis structure. All right, so the next thing that we're going to talk about are exceptions to the octet rule besides just hydrogen following the duet rule. So there's three exceptions that you'll see. Every now and then, when you do step one and add your valence electrons, you're actually going to get an odd number. And if you have an odd number, that means they can't all be paired up and somebody is not going to have eight. When you have an odd number, a lot of times it occurs with nitrogen, sometimes it'll be like chlorine or something, the odd electron goes on the central atom because the central atom tends to be the least electronegative. Um, so what you do is it's going to be a really weird situation. Like I hate the ones with the odd numbers because I can't stand an unpaired electron. Um, and so what you do is you just get everything the way you can and then you just literally have to take one off the center atom. It's very frustrating. All right, sometimes you need less than an octet. So some atoms have less than eight electrons. This usually happens with elements one through five. So we already know hydrogen, element one, follows the duet rule. Helium is not gonna bond with anything because it's already stable. It also follows the duet rule with two. 
Um, beryllium, which is Be, will normally surround itself with four electrons, and boron, which is element five, will normally surround itself with six electrons. Um, lithium forms ionic bonds usually, so it's a loss of electrons instead of a sharing. And then sometimes well, they'll actually have more than eight surrounding them. So some atoms have more than eight electrons. This usually happens with sulfur, phosphorus, the halogens, and then some noble gases. Now I know we've talked about the fact that noble gases are inert and non-reactive, but sometimes you can force them to react, especially with fluorine. Fluorine will literally bond with anything because it's so incredibly electronegative. All right, so let's look at some examples of these. All right, so our first one is NO2. So let's go to step one. First, we need to add our valence electrons. So N has five because it's in group 15. O has six because it's in group 16, but then I multiply it by two. So I get 12 plus five, which is ugh, 17. So as you can imagine, you've already figured out this is an odd number one. Oh my gosh, I hate these. <laughs> All right, so we next step is we single bond everybody. So since N is the single atom, N is going to go in the middle. And so, oops, sorry, I don't want that to look like a double bond. And so I'm just going to single bond everybody and just take a quick peek again at where I end. Okay, on the next slide. All right. So next step is follow octet and duet rule. So of course these are all going to follow the octet rule. So I have two to oxygen right now, so I add six more. I have two, four to nitrogen, so I add four more. And I have two to oxygen, so I add six more. So next step is I check my total. Oh my gosh, these are so frustrating. All right, so I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So I have 20 valence electrons. So I have three extra electrons. Oh, so frustrating. I can't fix three with an extra bond, but I can fix two of them with the extra bond. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a bond, but, uh oh, we got resonance going on here because look, it could go on either one. So yes, we're gonna have to draw two, but let's just focus on one for right now. Okay, so I add my extra bond to fix two of the extra electrons. And so then I need to readjust. So see oxygen has two, four, six, eight, ten. 10. So I get rid of two. My nitrogen has two, four, six, eight, ten, so I get rid of two. So now let's relook at our total. We have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. So now we're down to one extra. You cannot fix that with another bond. You can only fix two extra with another bond. So this is where it happens. You literally just have to take one away from the center atom. And it just has that lone electron that's looking at us and just, ah, I literally don't like these. <laughs> All right, so anyway, but we do have resonance on this because I could have put the double bond on this side. So we have to draw our other option. So in that case, I would put a single bond here and a double bond here. And remember, our single bond oxygen has six valence electrons or six uh, lone electrons. Our nitrogen has that one. Ugh. And our double bonded oxygen has the four. Okay, so that is an example of an odd number of electrons. It's terrible. So let's move on. All right, so next we have BF3. So if you paid attention on the previous slide, I told you that B and BE tend to not follow the octet rule. BE tends to surround itself with only four electrons, and B tends to surround itself with only six electrons. So that's important for you to remember because otherwise you'll start adding multiple bonds that don't need to be there. So like when I see something that starts with boron, I immediately in my mind think, okay, it's probably only going to have six electrons instead of the octet. Okay, so that's just something you're going to have to kind of memorize. So boron is in group 13, so it has three valence electrons, and F is in group 17, so it has seven, but I'm going to multiply that by three. So 21 plus three is 24 valence electrons. So step two, I single bond everybody. Since B is the single atom, I'm going to put it in the middle. All right, and then step three is octet and duet. So nobody follows the duet. So fluorine has two, so it needs six more. This fluorine has two, so it needs six more. 
This fluorine has two from the bond, so it needs six more. Then normally then we would go to boron and say, okay, it has two, four, six, so it needs two more. But remember, it tends to only surround itself with six. So let's stop and see if we have the right amount of electrons. If we still have more electrons, I'll give them to boron. But if we don't, then this is it. Okay, so I'm allowed 24, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. Okay, so the main thing that I see people do is they'll add two electrons to boron, and then they'll realize they have too many, and then they start trying to add a multiple bond, which doesn't happen in this one. So you just got to look out for B, E, and B. And then remember, hydrogen always follows do that rule, and helium's not going to bond with anything anyway. All right, so our last one, ICL4 negative. And I know that's kind of hard to tell. The font I use, the I, capital I, and the lowercase l look the same. So here, I'll just kind of make it an I for you. So it's ICL4 negative. All right, so the first step, of course, is to add our valence electrons. So I has 7. It's in group 17. CL is also in group 17, so it has 7. I'm going to multiply it by 4. And negative 1 charge means it has gained 1 electron. So I'm going to add one more. So we have 28 plus 8, which is 36 valence electrons. All right, so then I put my single bond on everybody. So since I is the single atom, I'm going to put it in the middle. And I'll bond all my CLs. Alright, so next step is I'm going to make everybody stable with octet and duet. So I don't have any hydrogen, so we're going to follow octet. So chlorine has two, so it needs six more. This chlorine has two, so it needs six more. This one has two, so it needs six more. And this one has two, so it also needs six more. I has two, four, six, eight, so it's good to go. But I'm going to have to check my total. So, I'm allowed to have 36. I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. I only have 32 valence electrons. Now remember, we can fix having extra electrons by adding another bond. Here, we don't have extras. We have too few. We're supposed to have 36. Like, this number that you add up when you start, you have to have that exact number. We don't have enough. So when that happens, again, it's the center atom. Just like when we don't have enough, the center atom doesn't get enough. When we have too many, the center atom gets the extra ones. All right, so we need four more electrons, so I need to give them both to I. And then that will give me 36. And again, when you see a halogen, or sometimes sulfur or phosphorus, that more than eight happens a lot with those. It can't happen until you get to the third energy level because then they have those D sublevels available. And then, of course, before I forget and talk through it, um, don't forget to bracket it and put your charge. All right, so that's what it looks like with an odd number, with less than an octet for boron, and with more than an octet for iodine. All right, so our next slide is our last slide for this part. And then we'll end it and I'll make part four. All right, so maybe pause it, try the first one. Hint, hint on the first one. It starts with BE. So remember what I told you about BE. I'll assume you pause it and try it, and so let's look at it together. All right, so first step is, of course, add our valence. So beryllium is in group two, so it has two. And chlorine is in group 17, so it has seven, but I'm going to multiply it by two. So 14 plus two is 16 valence electrons. All right, so next step is, of course, single bond, everybody. So since BE is by itself, I'm going to put that one in the middle. All right, and next step is follow octet and duet rule. So nobody follows duet rule in here. So let's go to octet. So Cl, it has two, so it needs six more. This Cl has two, so it also needs six more. Now normally, I would say, okay, well, Be has four, so it needs four more. But because I also know Be tends to not have an octet, I need to see if I have any electrons left to give to Be. So I'm going to stop here and check my total. So I'm allowed to have 16, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. 
and so BE only gets four electrons this time. So again, you just gotta watch out for BE and B because that's just something you gotta kinda memorize. All right, so hopefully you got that one right. If you haven't tried XEF2, go ahead and try that one. I'll soon be ready for us to try it together. All right, so XE is in group 18, so it has eight. Fluorine is in group 17, so it has seven, and of course times two. So 14 plus eight is 22 valence electrons. All right, so next step is I'm gonna single bond everybody. Since XE is the uh, single atom, it's gonna go in the middle. Next step is I follow octet duet rule. So I only need octet for this one. So F has two, so it needs six more. This F has two, so it needs six more. And then XE has two, four, so it needs four more. So everybody's stable. But now I need to check my total. See, checking your total is very important for every single one. All right, so I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. 20 valence electrons. So see, I don't have extras to where I need to add another bond. I don't have enough. I have to have 22. So remember, if you don't have enough, you have to give your extra electrons to the central atom. Okay, so I'm just going to move this set over and put it right here. And so XE, remember S, P, and the halogens, I'm oh, sorry, S, P, some of the halogens and the noble gases can have more than an octet. And so XE is a noble gas. All right, so hopefully you got that one right. All right, so let's look at our last one. I'm gonna assume you paused it and looked at it yourself. The last one's terrible. As you can already imagine, it's the odd number one, which I hate. Um, so anyway, let's look at it together. So first I add up our valence, so CL has seven, O has six times two for a total of 12 plus seven, which is uh, 19. All right, so we got the odd number ones, everyone's favorite. All right, so next step is I'm gonna single bond everybody. CL is the single atom, so it's gonna go in the middle. All right. So, next I am going to follow my octet and duet rule. So all of these would follow octet, so O has two, so I'm gonna add six more. O has two, so I'm gonna add six more. And then CL has two, four, so I'm gonna add four more. So next I'm gonna check my total, which we already know is wrong, because everything's all nice and beautiful and paired up. So I have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. I have 20 valence electrons. I am not allowed to have 20. I am only allowed to have 19. So I have no choice but to take one of them away from chlorine. Just like that. All right, now this one technically has resonance because you could do double bonds um, to your oxygen. Uh, but to keep it simple for this PowerPoint, we'll just stick with this right here. Okay, so we have uh, 19 valence electrons now because I removed that one from that center CL. All right, so hopefully the formal charges and the exceptions weren't too overwhelming. And remember, there is still going to be one more part that deviates a little bit from Lewis dot structure if you're getting tired of it. But you shouldn't be because Lewis dot structure is awesome.